In Civil 3D 2012, several enhancements have been made to the cross-section view or the CSV editor. One of the biggest is the introduction of a configurable environment that provides visual identifiers that enhance production understanding. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. If I come into my drawing and choose my corridor, I'm going to then choose my section editor, come and set my baseline to Pine Drive, choose my stationing at 4 plus 0, then I'm going to come over here and choose my viewport configuration option. For viewport 1, I want to set that to section, viewport 2 to plan, viewport 3 to profile. And then I'm going to simply press OK. I'm being prompted to turn on the option to apply viewport configuration within the section editor. So I'm going to say yes, I do want to allow that. And a couple important keys to note here. One, you cannot set two viewports to be the same type. If you do, an error message will be evoked. Two, one of the viewports must always be a section viewport. And three, the user has options to specify split ratios for the horizontal and vertical. By default, it's always set to 50% though. Now let's take a closer look at the station tracker and station slider in the CSV. Again, I'm going to simply come in and choose my corridor. Use the pull down in my section editor. And this time I'm going to choose view and edit options. I'm going to make sure that my section slider in multiple viewports is set to yes. And say OK. Again, I'm going to set my baseline to Pine Drive. And 4 plus 0. And now I'm just going to advance my stationing so you can see my slide bar moving not only in my profile, but in my plan as well. I also want to come down either to the plan or the profile and click on that slider bar and notice the two groups that appear. I'm able to move the location and notice how it adjusted my plan as well as my section. Another option I have for the station tracker is to come up to the station tracker button, expand it, and tell it to apply to all viewports. Now I can come down here to the plan view and move my station and notice how it's appearing in both my section view and my profile view as well. The payoff is that it provides better visibility into the model when editing the corridor. Also, to allow for more accurate modeling of complex corridors, several enhancements have been made to the way that corridors are created, viewed, and edited. At this time, I'd like to make you aware that in the tool space, the subassemblies are now under their parent
So let's take a look at new ways of editing corridors in the section editor. Again, I'm going to choose my corridor in my drawing. And click on my section editor. I'm going to set my baseline again to Pine Drive. And note that the alignment stationing starts with 3 plus 56.96 and the station in the section that is shown. Because no region is defined at this location, a red circle is shown at the baseline location. This is new to the 2012 release. Previously, only stations with defined regions were shown in the section editor. Next, we are going to insert an assembly from a tool palette at locations with an existing corridor where no region is defined. We're going to do this by choosing Add a Region. It's asking me to specify a start station, and I'm going to use 3 plus 56.96. and an end station. It's asking me to name my assembly. I'm sorry, name my region. And the assembly I'm going to ch choose is the basic assembly. I'm going to say OK. Here I need to choose my existing ground as my target surface and press OK. Notice that the basic assembly is currently not displayed in model space, yet we were able to use it to define our corridor model. If you select the basic assembly from the tool space, notice I am not able to select or zoom to. I only have the option to insert in model space. Now we're going to look at how to exchange one assembly for another. I'm going to go ahead and select my stationing at 5 plus 5, 0. And then come over here and choose Change Assembly button. And I'm going to choose the secondary road full section and say OK. Notice the immediate change in my section view. Now we're going to look at the subassembly target parameters using multi module grips. I'm going to go ahead and let my station choose my station to be 6 plus 50, and I want to come down here and choose my subassembly. Then I'm going to hover over top of my left, my left grip. And then I'm going to choose Target Surface Existing Ground. It's going to ask me to select a surface. And we're going to select the terrace surface. I'm going to come over here and set my corridor to rebuild. Once the corridor is rebuilt, the results will be displayed in my section viewport here. Keep in mind that this change affects the entire region, not just the station we are looking at. One 
one way to demonstrate that is by using the next region buttons. And there's also a previous region button as well. Another way to choose stationing is to use the filtering stations button. And if I drop down that pull down menu, notice I have the options for all baseline station, region stations, overridden stations, and non-region stations. I'm going to go ahead and choose the region stations here. Now, what about the stations not currently defined by the frequency set in our corridor properties? For instance, my assembly, my assembly frequency was set to every 25 feet along Pine Drive baseline when the corridor was originally created. Currently, these are the only stations that will appear here in my select station dropdown list. But to, to view information at a certain station, let's say six plus eight zero, I must use the pick station button here. And when it says to specify station, type it in. And notice how it appears up here, but with an asterisk next to it. This is an indication that the station in question was not in the definition of the original corridor. When displaying intermediate stations, all of the assembly edit commands will be displayed on the ribbon. Now, if I click on save intermediate station, notice how the asterisk no longer appears next to my stationing. Now in Civil 3D 2012, you are able to create corridor models completely from within the section editor. Assemblies are no longer required to be applied when the corridor is originally created. We're going to demonstrate this by coming over and creating an empty corridor. I'm going to choose my alignment State Road 25. The profile I'm going to choose is State Road 25 Proposed. And when it prompts me to choose an assembly, I'm just going to simply hit Escape. And it brings me into my Create Corridor dialog box. It's asking me to name my corridor, so I'm going to use the name Preview. And I'm going to press OK. It's giving me the error that I've, it's giving me a warning, not an error, that this corridor has zero defined regions. And that's OK. We're just going to simply press OK. Now we're going to want to open the preview corridor in our section editor. So let's come over to our tool space and right click on preview and click on corridor section editor. I'm going to come back to tool space here. And I'm going to expand my assemblies list, which it already is. And I'm going to simply right click on basic assembly and select preview in section editor. And we see the assembly here without the daylighting links. To apply this assembly to the creator region in the corridor, we're simply going to select the Apply button from the preview panel of the section editor. It's going to prompt us for a start and end station.
And after applying the preview assembly, we can now set the targets. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on the drop down menu for preview and choosing edit preview targets. We're going to set it to existing ground and say OK. Notice the changes. Also, the option to turn on and off the display of objects in the section editor is, is a new option and is applied at the feature level only. And it applies to displays of everything of a specific feature type. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate this by coming again and choosing our corridor. Taking it into our section editor. And on the View Tools tab, we are going to choose Specify the Object Type. And notice currently, the only check we have is next to Surfaces. We're going to go ahead and turn on our feature lines as well. And then I'm going to advance our stationing. And now if I zoom in, you can see the gas valve is now displayed. And it also coincides with the gas feature line in the plan view as well. The payoff of this is, of this is corridor editing enhancements now allow designers to build construction ready models more efficiently and will better equip transportation teams to develop 3D models of large, complex road and highway projects.